I'm Tracy Walker. I'm a filmmaker. I'm Rachel Baskerville. I'm a photographer. And together we are producing a calendar. Join us as we take to the road to get to know 12 fabulous women and their old girls. This is Old Girls on the Road. Today we're going to meet Fran and Grubb, her late 1953 Morris, which she's owned for 62 years. It certainly wasn't a classic car when she bought it, it was only three years old. Thank you very much for having us here today, Fran, yes. into your home cool. and being a part of Old Girls on the Road. You're the last uh, person that we're doing for this show, and of the 12 we're doing, you're the oldest, but you also have been the hardest to pin down. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you so busy? Well, this and that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, well, just keeping this place in order, really. But in addition, I do the bush regeneration and I do various sorts of dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and I still go to some scientific meetings. And you recently went camping for three weeks. <laughs> Two weeks. From, Two weeks. Well, from Alice Springs to Perth with, with a group of six people. It was quite a challenge, so actually, because they moved on fairly swiftly each oh, night. Oh, okay. Uh, and so there was a lot of tents up and down. Up and down. Yes. The, yes. the six people that you went camping with, what was the what was the common interest? Birds and plants yeah. and the, the country, yes. uh, the desert country, which I have quite an affinity yeah. with. My husband and I, after we he retired, we spent the best part of... 20 years going somewhere or other for several weeks in the mostly in the winter. Have you always had a love for the outdoors? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, yeah, well there was a lot of outdoors here when I was <laughs> young. <laughs> Did that love of the outdoors spark your interest in science in any way? No. I ended up in biochemistry because Dorothy Hill, who was the first well, first female professor in Australia, probably. A geologist lived just opposite here. And she said to me one day, there's this new science of biochemistry, she said, you know, if you like chemistry, that's maybe what you ought to mm -hmm. go, go into. So I did, yes. I imagine that you've seen quite a lot of changes over the years. You've been around for a while. Um, when, what decade would you say saw the most positive changes for women? I think women have always been able to, to do what they want. I think the, the, the war probably changed a whole lot of things, but I think since then that any women who, women who say they can't make their way are not um, trying. Yeah. The big change, I mean, when I was at school, the only high school that there was in Brisbane was state high mm -hmm. and commercial high and domestic science. So everybody who went to, did t uh, secondary education went to private schools. And so if you were in a g school of girls, you, it was just expected that you mm. would succeed. It was just never questioned that you weren't going to make use of this privileged education. Fran, you started dancing at three years old. Yes. <laughs> and you're still dancing. Yes. But I believe you had a gap in the middle, middle and, yeah. and went back yes. when you were 40. What prompted you to get involved at 40? Well, there were classes in the hall across the street there at the Uniting Church. Mm -hmm. So I thought, right, you know, as my one concession per week to myself, I'll go to this yes. one one hour jazz class well, across the road. Just across the road. <laughs> yes. When Queensland Ballet moved from Elizabeth Street, so I started 
going to her adult right. classical classes yeah, yeah. and they were they were wonderful and so I kept going there until I was 70 <laughs> but in the meantime I'd been going to bush dances we both had <laughs> and um, as a spin-off from that there was the Playford dance group which I still go to and also I've been going to the International Folk Dance Group, which does Balkan dance. Did you ever think that you might dance professionally? Oh, probably when I was about 12 I thought that, but you soon find out that, you, <laughs> that you're not going there. We do this little game with our ladies. This game's called Fast and Furious. You're given a choice and you just very quickly tell us which one of the two you think is more conducive to a positive ageing process. All right, so here we go. Moderate alcohol consumption or bottoms up? Oh, moderate alcohol. A challenge or a comfort? It's hard. <laughs> a um, comfortable challenge? Yes, let's say that. <laughs> yes. 10 units of Botox or a poofteenth of attitude? Attitude. Yeah. A sea change or a tree change? Both. Money or love? Love. Look going on there, Fran. Oh. <laughs> Glamour shot. <laughs> that tastes of whiskey wash him out of my mouth. What did it mean to have a car in the 50s? I worked at Royal Brisbane, so it was mm. good to have the car once I started work, particularly if I worked long hours, as yes. one does. And um, we used to have competitions, the grub and I, to see if we could get home without. <laughs> a, a red a, a traffic light. A traffic light. <laughs> and and so he's very good at oh, sensing God. green lights. Fran, was this your first car? Yes, it was my first car. It was three years old when I went to England in nineteen fifty eight. Um, I sold it to my father and we were married in England and when we came back here three years later mm -hmm. he gave it back to us as oh, a wedding it, present. Oh, nice. So it's been mine ever since yeah. all that time. Back in the 50s when you first got grub, did you use it much uh, recreationally? Oh, yes. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's been on long journeys. Mm -hmm. we, in 1962, we were going up to visit friends up at, at, between Jin Jin and Monto, and we did the 48 Creek crossings that mm -hmm. you needed to do. But on the way home, that... Um, road between Jin Jin and Childers was still a dirt road mm -hmm. at that time and about halfway along there somewhere we got the engine stopped I can't remember what happened but mm -hmm. I was pr fairly pregnant Taffy hailed a passing car and went into Childers luckily the RACQ man it must have been the weekend or something mm -hmm. had actually just come into his office and he happened to have the right fan belt and do you think you've held on to it all this time out of sentiment or because it's a practical vehicle and does what you need it to do? Well, both really, mm -hmm. uh, because it's so handy round town mm. now, because uh, I can park it yes. uh, anywhere. Mm. And do you get much attention when you're driving mm. around in this? People stop and mm. talk quite often. Yep. Yes. Yep. They come up and say, oh, that must be worth a lot of money and so mm. forth, and I sort of say, Mm. Jokingly, well, how much are you offering? And, <laughs> and they melt away very quickly. <laughs> thank you. That's going to look beautiful you on the calendar. Well by the set. Look at yes, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Well, it's been a pleasure. Oh, look forward to seeing you at the launch of the calendar. And I hope it's all come out okay. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll be on my way. <laughs>